About Family Justice – What You Need to Know About Access Orders in Singapore What are access orders? Generally, the parent who has care and control of the child is the parent with whom the child or children live with. Access orders are made for the parent who does not have care and control. Such orders grant the non-care and control parent the ability to spend time and maintain their relationship with the child or children. Such orders ensure that the child be given every opportunity to spend time and benefit from the interaction with both parents. When are access orders made? Access orders may be made in one of the following two situations. First, where there are ongoing divorce proceedings. In those proceedings, the court may either grant interim access, which means the court will make temporary access orders until the completion of the matter, or make access orders as part of the final ancillary orders, which is when the divorce proceedings are fully completed and finalised by the court. Second, if there are no pending divorce proceedings, issues of access may arise from an application made under the Guardianship of Infants Act. Main Aspects of Access When dealing with issues of access, the court generally addresses it through two main areas. First, the nature of access, specifically whether access is supervised or unsupervised. Second, the specific particulars of access, broadly dealt with in terms of the duration and extent of access. The nature of access orders, supervised or unsupervised. When making such orders, the court, in considering the best interests of the child, may determine that access take place in a more gradual fashion. In such a situation, the court may order supervised access, being access where a third party is present during the access time. This third party may either be 1. The care and control parent, 2. Another family member or other prescribed person, including a domestic helper, or 3. A third party agency such as a Divorce Support Specialist Agency or DSSA. This ensures a conducive space for the child to become increasingly comfortable and more attuned to the new routine of staying with the care parent and spending time with the access parent. There are six DSSAs located across the island. Supervised access via the DSSA is only available for Singapore citizens and Singapore permanent residents. If a DSSA is not available, supervised access may be facilitated by a third-party child specialist facility. Such a child specialist facility is available to everyone, including non-citizens and non-PRs. Unsupervised access is where the access parent can enjoy his or her access time without the supervision of a third party. While access may be unsupervised, there may be situations where the handing and taking over of the child between the care and control parent and access parent requires some assistance. In such situations, the court may order what is known as supervised exchange. This is where a third party is to be present during handover and takeover. Supervised exchanges can also be done via a DSSA or a third party child specialist facility. The Specific Particulars of Access Orders The duration and extent of access can be broken down into two categories. The first category is reasonable or liberal access. This is where both the care parent and the access parent have the liberty to make their own arrangements together with the child on when access would take place. This requires a reasonable degree of flexibility and cooperation between both parents to make such access work. The second category is scheduled or specified access. This is where the court makes specific orders on when and how access will take place. When making such orders, the court may also specify, among other things, the period of access and where the handover would take place. Scheduled or specified access orders could deal with, among other things, weekday access, weekend access, overnight access, school holiday access, public holiday access and access during special occasions, and overseas access. Access Orders – A Collaborative Effort While the court will assess a wide range of issues in determining appropriate orders in the best interests of the child, 
parents are encouraged to work together to arrive at their own resolution on the best arrangements that suit the specific needs of their own family. Adopting a collaborative effort can shield the child from court proceedings and allow all parties to transition smoothly into the next phase of their familial relationship. Programs and reports dealing with access. At every stage of any proceedings, there are various programs and reports which may be ordered or commissioned to assist the court as well as the parties in dealing with child matters. These include parenting programs, mandatory counseling, mediation at the Child Focus Resolution Center, the appointment of a child representative, the appointment of a parenting coordinator, the Child in Between program, counseling at the DSSAs, court commissioned reports, and child expert reports. For more information regarding access orders and the programs and reports available, please visit the FJC website. For more information regarding the DSSA, you may visit the DSSA's website.